Hey guys, welcome to Storytime with Candace and Alyssa. Yay! All right, so the last couple weeks we've been talking about the armor of God. We've gone all over the pieces of the armor of God, and we thought for this summer we would get back into studying some books of the Bible. So we are going to learn about some of the prophets. We're going to talk about the minor prophets, and they're not minor because they were any less important. They just call them minor prophets because the books they wrote are a little bit shorter. Now, um, we're just going to kind of go over and highlight some of the stuff, but what I would encourage you to do is have your parents read them to you. The longest two of the minor prophets are Zechariah and Hosea and they are each 14 chapters long. All of the other books are shorter. So what I would suggest is if you read two chapters in Hosea and Zechariah a week, you will do it and finish it in one week. Um, and then the weeks when we have some of the shorter books, um, like Obadiah for instance, it's just one chapter with 15 verses. So you could finish that in like 10 minutes. All right? So I would encourage you parents to read those with your books uh, read those books, sorry, with your kids, um, and, or maybe older kids read them with your younger siblings. All right? All right, so in Hosea, that's the first minor prophet we're going to talk about. I'm just going to give you a little introduction to Hosea. So he was a prophet of God who lived around the same time as Isaiah, and God's people were disobeying God constantly. There were a few people who are trying to live the way that God wanted them to live, but the majority were disobedient. A prophet's job was to tell the people what God was telling him. He did not tell part of what God told him, or just the parts that were good. A prophet always said exactly what God wanted him to say, and was not afraid to say it, no matter the consequences. A prophet of God was very brave. Hosea's name means salvation, and that is what he preached to the people. He warned the people if they, that if they did not repent or turn from their wicked ways, then they would go into captivity. The book of Hosea was written during the divided kingdom, where there were kings of Israel, like Jeroboam, and kings of Judah, like Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. During those times, the people did not repent, and they went into captivity. But at the time Hosea lived, they were living a life of prosperity. Things were good. They had food to eat. There were not too many wars. When times were good, the people forgot God. They had not learned that God was serious about allowing the people to be captured. Even though God's prophets were constantly telling the people to repent, or they would go into captivity. Hosea told the people that they were going to be destroyed because they had a lack of knowledge of God. This meant that they didn't know anything about God. They did not want to learn of God or his ways, so God was going to reject them. The people had forgotten God, and as a consequence of their sin, God was going to forget his children. Hosea's life and the words that he spoke illustrated a picture of a relationship that God had with his people. When times were tough, the people remembered how good God was to them, and they would pray to him, asking him to help them. But when times were good, they began to believe that they were the ones who were independent and could do things their own way. Then they forgot God. God would then send something, a war, pestilence, famine, to remind the people that he was in control. It was a vicious cycle. That's how it was Hosea's time. One important thing to remember, whenever the people repented, God always took them back. I just have a little summary here kind of of Hosea, some of the notes I've taken this week, and I just wanted to, to um, share them with you. So the message of Hosea is the story of God's jealous 
and yet unrelenting love for his wayward bride. A people chosen by grace and redeemed from slavery to serve the only true God. Israel failed to remain faithful to her husband and when she pursued other lovers by trusting in idols and foreign powers, God therefore promised to suspend his covenant blessings to Israel by sending the nation into exile so they would repent and appreciate God's incomparable love when he graciously accepted them back again. In light of this message, Hosea prefigures the gospel. Only by God's grace, through the work of Jesus Christ, can our wayward humanity be redeemed from the power of sin and death and forever be reconciled with its creator. Even as we repeatedly encounter God's jealousy and judgment in the Old Testament prophets, we are always reminded of God's merciful salvation available to all who return to their faithful and forgiving God and those who are contrite of heart um, and really repent and turn to Him um, will experience His love and salvation. The Jesus Storybook Bible by Sally Lloyd-Jones The Good Shepherd David was a shepherd, but God looked at him and he saw a king. Sure enough, when David grew up, that's just what he became, and David was a great king. He had a heart like God's heart, full of love. Now that didn't mean he was perfect, because he did some terrible things, he even murdered a man. No, David made a big mess of his life, but God can take even the biggest messes and make it work in his plan. I need a new heart, Lord, David prayed, because mine is full of sin. Make me clean inside. God heard David's prayer. He forgave David, and he made David a promise. I will make you great, David, and one day a king will be born into your family, and he will heal the whole world. Did you know that David was a songwriter, too? In fact, his songs were so good, they might have even been in the top 40 charts if they'd been invented then. David's songs are like prayers. They are called psalms, and this one is called the Song of the Shepherd. It's probably number one on the psalm charts, and it goes like this. God is my shepherd, and I am his little lamb. He feeds me, he guides me, he looks after me. I have everything I need. Inside, my heart is very quiet, as quiet as lying still in soft green grass in a meadow by a little stream. Even when I walk through the dark, scary, lonely places, I won't be afraid because my shepherd knows where I am. He is here with me. He keeps me safe. He rescues me and makes me strong and brave. He is getting wonderful things ready for me, especially for me, everything I ever dreamed of. He fills my heart so full of happiness, I can't hold it all inside. Whenever I go, I know God's never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love will go too. God gave David that song to sing to his people so they could know that he loved them and he would always look after them like a shepherd loves his sheep. And one day God was going to do something that would inspire thousands upon thousands of new songs. God was going to show his people once and for all just how much he loved them. Another shepherd was coming, a greater shepherd. He would be called the Good Shepherd. And this shepherd was going to lead all of God's lambs back to the place where they had always belonged, close to God's heart. Just
guys. Are you ready to do a craft with me? All right, so first of all, we need a piece of construction paper and a piece of white paper. Now the construction paper needs to be a little bit bigger than the white paper. Um, let me show you. So it needs to be a little bit different um, and we'll find out why right away. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold our piece of construction paper in half. See? Perfect. And then we're just gonna kind of, where's my pencil? Got my pencil here. We're just gonna kind of cut off the corners here. Just gonna kind of trace them here so that we can make them kind of curved like, okay? So there's one and here's the other. And do you know what? Let's I want to do that one too. Let's see here. So there we go. It's kind of like a book when you open it up. All right. So now we're going to do the same thing with our white paper. We're going to take it, fold it in half, fold it in half, and you're just going to cut the corners again. I'm going to freehand it this time. You're just going to kind of cut the corners. There we go. And again, I'm going to do kind of the one just on the top. There we go. So there's that piece when we stick it down in the here it's kind of like a book cool let's just move these scraps out of the way all right so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to glue this white piece or tape it down in this case you can smear it all with glue or you can use some double-sided tape whatever you've got Stick it down in your little book here. You just need to line it up good. All right. Oh, I've got mine upside down for a second here, guys. There we go. All right. There. Make sure that's good and stuck on there. There we go. All right. So. Now the other thing you can do is you can take a, a marker or something and I'm just gonna kinda add it to the sides just to kinda make it look like it's actually an open book. You know how um, when you open your Bible, it's you can kinda see like the edges of pages so let me, let me show you here what I mean. See? So it kind of looks like it's an open book there. If you want, you can kind of color those pages. I know a lot of Bible, Bibles, they have kind of colored edges on the side, sometimes red, sometimes kind of gold on that fancy onion skin paper. All right, so we've got that there. And now we are going to write this week's memory verse on there. So the memory verse this week is, oops, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So, there's our verse, and that's Hosea chapter 4, verse 6a. So, it's the first half of verse 6, okay? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6a. So that verse is talking about 
um, God's people not knowing what was right. And do you know what? It's the pre it was the priest's job to teach the people. And you have the priests, they didn't do that. They were just as lost in their sin um, as all of the rest of them. So it's very important for us to know our Bibles and to learn that. If you know what God's word says, you can obey it and you can do it. I'm just coloring a little bit of yellow on the edges of my paper to make it look more like a book. There we go. Oh, the other thing, do you know what a lot of Bibles have? They have some built-in bookmarks. Um, so we're gonna add some ribbon, if I can find the end of it here. Here we go. We're just gonna add some ribbon and we're just gonna tape it down the middle of our Bible. Um, kind of like a little bookmark. So I'm just gonna cut that off where it needs to be. need sharper scissors is what I need. All right, so I've got a piece of ribbon and I'm gonna put my piece of tape down the center here and I'm gonna stick our bookmark in there. There we go. So when we close it up, we've got a tab there and there's our little bookmark. So I want you to say that verse again with me. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea chapter four, verse six A. Awesome job, guys. That was a fun craft. You know, that memory verse really makes me think about this book that we have. It's called The Big Red Tractor and the Little Village. And it's by Francis Chan. And it reminded me when Alyssa said that it's important to know our Bible, it reminded me of this book. So I'd like to read it to you and we'll see how it ties in with learning about Hosea. Once upon a time in a happy little village, a big red tractor lived in a cozy little shed. Each year when the snow started to melt, the villagers knew it was time to plow their field. So every morning they'd go out to the little shed and wake up the big red tractor. They loved the powerful putt butt kaboom noises he made. And they cheered because the big red tractor helped them with their hardest job, plowing the field. Everyone worked together to move the big red tractor through the field. Half the villagers pushed him, the other half pulled him. He smiled cheerfully, glad to help, even though they never seemed to move him very far. The villagers worked very hard and they always finished plowing the field just in time to plant delicious vegetables and sweet fruit before the rain came. The rain fell from the sky and watered the field. The sun came out and made the seeds grow. Finally, the villagers gathered all the food in large baskets. Everyone celebrated, everyone shared. There was just enough food to feed the whole village. Then, one cold day, something amazing happened. Farmer Dave was cleaning out his attic and discovered a book tucked inside an old chest. It explained how the big red tractor had been made, and it showed powerful things no one knew he could do. Farmer Dave stayed up all night reading the book. He couldn't wait to tell everyone what he had discovered. The next morning, Farmer Dave gathered the villagers to tell them the good news. The big red tractor can move on his own. If we fix him, he could plow the entire field in just one day. But nobody believed him. There's no way that tractor can move on his own, they said. It sounds like a fairy tale. They laughed at him and went back to their work. This made Farmer Dave very sad. But Farmer Dave didn't stop believing what he had read. Every night while the villagers were asleep, Farmer Dave stayed up late fixing the big red tractor. Finally, after many nights, Farmer Dave was done. He jumped onto the big red tractor and turned him on, putt putt kaboom. He jumped in the driver's seat and had so much fun that he plowed the whole field that very night. 
The next morning, the villagers woke up to a huge surprise. Their work was done for them. They would not have to spend many weeks pushing and pulling the big red tractor over fields of dirt. It's a miracle. Who did this for us? Look over there. It was Farmer Dave, sleeping on the big red tractor. The people shouted happily, Farmer Dave was right. The tractor book is true. That year, the villagers plowed and harvested many fields. They had so much extra food that they were able to share it with people in other villages who needed it. When they visited other villages, Farmer Dave and the Big Red Tractor always took the book with them so they could teach others about the wonderful news they'd learned. The little village kept sharing and the villagers became known as the most generous people in the world. Did you know that you are like the Big Red Tractor? God made you and he knows just how you work best. He wrote a book full of truth that you can read to help you know how to live too. The Bible tells us that if we try to do things on our own, we won't accomplish much. But if we trust Jesus, God gives us his spirit so we'll have new power, the power to love others and tell them about God. God made us to be a blessing to others through the spirit. We can do great things just like Jesus. When the Holy Spirit comes to you, you will receive power. Acts 1.8 Okay, so we are going to do an activity that's going to help us learn the books of the Minor Prophets. This is my assistant, hopefully. So we have all the books of the Minor Prophets written out on these cups. Oakley is going to see if he can stack them in order without letting them fall. Ready to try? Yeah. First, Hosea. Hosea. Joel. Nahum, Amos, after Amos is, what does it say, Obadiah, oh my goodness, after Obadiah is Jonah, oh my, What's that say? Um, Micah. Micah. What's that say? Um, oh, it's wobbling. Have a cook. Have a Oh, you better get that one more centered. Goodness. Next is Haggai. Oh my. Haggai, then Zachariah, right? Yep. And last is Malachi. Can you do it? It's very wobbly. We just stacked all the books of the New Testament, or the Minor Prophets. Good job, Oakley. All right, let's pray, guys. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much um, for the way you love us. I thank you, Lord, that you have given us um, the ability and access to read the Bible and to learn about you. I pray that you would help us to absorb that knowledge of you and um, know it in our hearts. I pray, Lord, that um, you would just help us to understand your grace and your mercy through what Jose has taught us this week. I just um, pray that we would turn to you with contrite and repentant hearts and that we would long to, um, to be in a right relationship with you, Lord. I just thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. And I just thank you so much for Jesus and the work he did on the cross. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.